Okay, I'm happy to be here today to share with you this training. God's grace and warning to motivate us to turn away from sins. That, um, you know, uh, we have many messages about uh, God's grace to motivate us to obey Him. But here is a part that talks about turning away from sins. That's more uh, serious warning message. But yet we can have God's grace here to motivate people. So, um, so God's grace is not just for motivating people to obey God, but also to motivate people to turn away from sins and to hate sins and to grow in Jesus Christ. So now we understand that uh, God's grace is not just for, for positive motivation. It's also for motivation to turn away from sins, not just motivation to obey God. So I hope this will be helpful and I'm waiting for the, for the pastors to respond. Please respond to me. So God's grace and warning to motivate us to turn away from sins. That uh, when we want to have messages to warn people to turn away from the sins, how can we have God's grace put into those messages? Now some people thought that we have to yell at people. Some people thought we have to scream at people. Uh, before they would change. That's not true, okay? And here are a few uh, areas. For instance, here it says that if someone tells a lie, now, you know, uh, telling a lie, some people think it's normal, but uh, Jesus warned us that Satan is the father of all liars. So lying is not, uh, you know, is against God's will or lust or gossip, or to steal, especially to steal money from the church. So um, now, let me just um, here briefly say how we can motivate people not to do these things. So briefly say, so that you have a better understanding when I don't have so many points. Okay, uh, when we want to help people not to tell lies, so what can we do? We can tell them, you know, God cares about you, God loves you, and God is an honest God. In God there is no darkness, no sins, and no lying. Now it's very important, I explain, as I explained to some pastors who do the assignments, I said that it's very important that the whole sermon follows the, the theme. So if the theme is to warn people not to tell lies, then uh, every part has to do with lying. So God's nature here would be God doesn't tell lies, and God doesn't like liars, and God cannot have a good relationship with liars. And when God sees a liar, He cannot trust the person. He would not entrust uh, his kingdom to such a person when he sees that person tells lies. So this is uh, God's nature, His holiness. At the same time, He cares about people. He wants to forgive people. He wants to change liars because He knows that everyone has told lies. There is no person in this world that has never told a lie. We all have told lies. So we all understand that it's natural for people to tell lies to protect themselves. So, um, so we tell them, you know, uh, first we can talk about the negative and positive examples that, you know, even Christians and even sometimes pastors tell lies. And then uh, the pastors would lose the trust of the people because when they found the pastor has told lies, then they would not trust him anymore. So that's negative example. And positive example are people who really uh, want to, uh, to be honest all the time. And these people have the trust of people. And God's nature is He is a trustworthy God. He never tells lies. All the promises in the Bible, that, uh, for sure God will make all these promises come true. 
and he promised to bless those who follow him and his promise will come true so he never tell lies and his grace to people okay to grace to people is that he when a person is converted he put the Holy Spirit in him and this Holy Spirit doesn't like lying so when the person wants to lie the Holy Spirit will convict him of his sin and motivate him to for, uh, to repent of his sins and turn away from the sin so this is the grace related to telling a lie so this is very important that the whole um, uh, sermon would relate to telling a lie so the grace is that he you know God lives when ho the Holy Spirit lives in us he doesn't like lying when we want to tell a lie then the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin and we'll feel uncomfortable we'll feel convicted and then we'll but then uh, for some Christians who are not strong in the Lord or who have not really committed to uh, telling the truth all the time they will struggle they will say I have to tell a lie now if I don't tell a lie I might get in trouble so they think that uh, it's better to tell a lie so that there is a struggle but the Holy Spirit speaks to us speak to us and guide us to repent of the sin and turn away from telling a lie but to uh, tell the truth uh, so this is telling the steps uh, it's very important that we share a message with people we don't just say don't tell lies we don't just say one step tell don't tell the lies but we tell them the, the steps inside our hearts as Christians as pastors and Christians we grow in telling the truth and in the process we have learned that when we have the desire to tell a lie the Holy Spirit will convict us and we'll feel uncomfortable and then we also have experienced this struggle of the Holy Spirit and our flesh that our flesh doesn't want to tell the truth and the Holy Spirit wants us to tell the truth so inside we have this struggle with any kind of sin so whenever we talk about any kind of sin we want to draw from our own experience in the past that in the past we have told you know we ourselves have told lies and we know the struggle how not to tell lies so we had this struggle ourselves so we understand the process and we want to tell people not to tell lies uh, and, and tell them the process we went through ourselves okay so that's God's grace and then God's grace of uh, uh, the uh, transferable grace that he can help us give us strength and wisdom to help people not to tell lies and then the reward and blessing when we are honest all the time we tell the truth all the time God is happy with us God will reward us and he will bless our whole life so this is the motivation from God's nature and grace and then why do Christians still tell lies so we every point is related to telling a lie so why do Christians still tell lies because many Christians still think that they can run away from God they they think that they can just hide their lies from God it will be a long time before the final judgment so they think it doesn't matter so that is the reason why many people fall into sins because they think it doesn't matter okay so that's the reason and then the warning the warning is that when a person tell lies then he's quenching the Holy Spirit then he's stopping the work of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not happy with that and then God is not happy with the person there will be a problem with the relationship with this person and this person could you know the relationship with God will become weaker and weaker and then if he continue to quench the Holy Spirit then he could be telling you know telling lies all the time and then he would lose the presence of, the, of God in his heart he will lose the Holy Spirit in his heart and then he can lose salvation so that's the worst scenario so how how can we stop telling lies 
So um, we can think about how in the last time we overcome our lies or the last time we told a lie, and then we notice how our struggle was inside our hearts. So then we understand human nature. Basically, people tell lies for two reasons. One reason is not a necessary reason. Some people just have the habit of telling lies. They, they just want to boast. They just want to tell lies to, to tell people that they are great. You know, they said, uh, oh, my father is a rich man. I had a big house. I have, uh, I have been you know, champion in sports events. I have uh, done very well in school. And those things are not true. And so those are, that's one reason, just boasting. And the reason is people want to protect themselves, that they, they've done something wrong. If they don't tell a lie, then uh, people would know that, you know, that they have done, he had done something wrong. For instance, someone breaks something in a church. He dares not tell the other people. And then what happened is, you know, he would say, well, uh, someone uh, broke it. I didn't do anything. So they told a lie. The reason is to protect themselves. Okay, so those are the reasons. So how can we, how can we stop telling lies? Then we say, okay, I noticed that um, I myself would have this, you know, uh, uh, desire to tell a lie. And then I know that this is wrong. So, and then the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sins. And then when we trust in God and we say, if I follow God and obey God in every way, then we'll be blessed by God. Remember, I talk about four motivation. First point is that God loves us very much. Second point is we are very precious. Third point, if we trust in God, love God, have a good relationship with Him and obey and serve God, God will bless us. And the fourth point is that if we don't obey God, if we tell lies, if we sin, then there will be destructiveness then there will be destruction to our life. So, so we understand that if we tell lies, then destruction can come to our life. So we say, yes, Lord, I don't want to tell lies. And I ask God to forgive me. And then I will, you know, I will tell myself, okay, I have to face the consequence of what I did. Even though if I've done something wrong, I have to admit that and I have to stop it so that uh, I will not be covering one lie with another, another lie. And then sooner or later, he has to tell more lies to cover the other lies. So, so these are steps, ways that we can overcome telling uh, the sin of telling a lie. Okay, so I'm using uh, simple things to illustrate this. Okay, lust. Um, so the negative and positive examples of people. Now, it's true that lust and fornication, uh, adultery are something common even among some Christians. Some Christians would watch pornography online and they are tempted uh, by, uh, by women or men, you know, uh, the opposite sex, that they are tempted. And, uh, and then there are pastors and of course many laymen too who fell because of fornication or adultery so there are negative examples and positive examples are there are people like joseph he really ran away from adultery and also uh, many christians they really keep their life clean and holy in the whole life they don't commit any adultery so those are negative and positive examples. And then God's nature and grace. In God, there is holiness. There is no lust, no fornication, no adultery. He, and He hates those kinds of sins. So you see that each point is related to the theme. So God hates adultery. God hates lust. And God doesn't have those at all. God is very clean. In his relationship with us, God is very, very clean. So God doesn't have any kind of lust inside him. And he, he, uh, he's happy with those people who have a clean life. And he cannot stand people who are lustful. If people are lustful, God feels very uncomfortable when 
God's presence come to that person. That's why God's presence will be very weak with such people. Okay? And then God's grace. How does God help us to overcome lust? So He, uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't like lust. So when a Christian have, uh, well first, when a person is saved, the Holy, the Holy Spirit comes into his heart and the Holy Spirit will give him a heart to follow holiness, that he wants to follow holiness. But very often, he could fail. He could, you know, he could, uh, you know, give in to, to lust when he sees a beautiful woman or when she sees a handsome man and then they attempt it and then they, they fell. But the Holy Spirit will keep moving in our heart. And actually, in the hearts of most people, uh, it's not just one step to adultery. There are many steps. The first step would be looking at a woman. The second step is thinking about a woman and then cannot stop thinking about her. And then uh, keep thinking about the person day and night and then start to take some action. And then, uh, and then there is one point that he crossed over the line to commit adultery. So there are steps and the Holy Spirit will speak to us in every step. The Holy Spirit will, will tell us, will remind us of our sins. And then uh, when the person pray to God and praise God, he will have conviction in his heart. He will not have peace. The Holy Spirit will tell him to stop the lust, to stop the fornication. And then if he responds to the Holy Spirit, God is very, very happy. God will give him more motivation and God will give him joy when he overcomes his fornication. And God will reward him and bless him greatly. So this is what God does to motivate a person. So, uh, and then God will reward that person uh, when the person uh, obey God and then God will bless his life and, and bless him with a good wife or a good husband to a woman. So God will uh, prepare a good spouse for the person who live a holy life. And then why do Christians still commit adultery? Because, so now is the reason. The, the reason is that because they um, there are temptation in the world and there are more and more temptation. Temptations come easily now. Uh, and there are people who want to have fornication and adultery in the world. They, even online, they look for people to commit adultery. So this is very common now. And then also some Christians uh, fell to lust and fornication and they gave a bad example to other Christians. And when they talk with other Christians, they would talk about women in a, in a church and then it caused the other Christians to fall also. So these are <clears throat> what, um, uh, what happens, why, why do some people fall because they could not, you know, they, they see bad examples and therefore they, they fell. Okay, and then uh, a big reason is that because we have this inside us, we have this desire. We have this desire for being, uh, to be loved. And then, so when a person sees a beautiful person, he wants to be loved by this person. He wants to be comforted by this person. He wants to touch that person. So there are all kinds of desire from us that if we don't, have the presence of God to tell us that God has prepared you know a, the perfect person for our marriage or God has prepared a single life now for some people God prepares a single life it doesn't mean that would be uh, painful single people have more time to serve God so when he sees that my life I can bless so many people and God will be happy with me and forever and ever I will receive eternal reward then he'll be, he will say, well, it doesn't matter if I don't get married. So it's not necessary to get married. Now, when I came to Africa, I noticed something. Uh, some people always refer to my wife as mother, mom, mom. I said, 
she's not a mom. She doesn't have children. We don't have children. And, and then people are surprised because in Africa, everyone is, uh, you know, the, the women are all married and they, they want to have children. And also when we sometimes brought some uh, ladies to, the, to, to Africa and they always call them mom. I said, they are not moms, they are not married. And they couldn't understand that because in the African culture, it's like people have to get married. But that's not true. In uh, Romans chapter 7, Paul talked about that, you know, being single, you have more time for God. It, you know, we don't have to be married. Uh, not everyone has to be married. And so this is um, a culture or even maybe a social pressure to get married. And so sometimes people just rush to marriage with non-Christians and this causes different kinds of problems because then a non-Christian would be tempted easier into, tempt, uh, to, into fornication and adultery and that will cause different kinds of problems in the life. So these are uh, problems that are what we need to handle. Okay, so this, uh, the, the warning is that, you know, for any reason, when people look for marriage or look for someone to love them, then they are, t are tempted. This can bring destruction to his life. There are pastors who were put in prison because of adultery and they lose the, their ministry, they lose their reputation, they lose the church, they lose everything. So it's terrible. That's warning. And for anyone who commit adultery, there is serious consequence. Okay, how? Now, I have these five steps to victory, which is very helpful. First is aware, being aware of the sin. Second is destructiveness. I know that it, it is destructive. Sins are destructive. And then third, the Bible. What does the Bible tell me? And then fourth, pray for forgiveness and strength. And five, choose to obey. So for lust, we can follow this. First, if we are aware that we have lust for someone, and then we believe that this will bring destruction. So stop staring at that girl. Stop thinking about her. Turn away. Think about God. And pray to God. So second is be believing that is destructive. And then third is, what does the Bible say? The Bible say, flee from adultery. Uh, and then be holy as the Father is holy. And then four, pray. You know, when we pray, the presence of God comes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're loving God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll have more strength to overcome our sins and ask God to forgive our lust. And then five, I choose to think about God. I choose to bless that woman instead of lusting after her. I bless that woman to have a good marriage that, uh, that I also prayed for blessing for myself so that I will not fall into uh, lust or adultery. So those are ways that we can overcome uh, the lust. Okay, and then gossip. So a message on gossip. So the negative and positive examples, uh, you know, the, for the gossip is that every idle word will be, you know, uh, in a judgment time that every idle word of ours will be presented in the time of judgment and will be judged according to what we say, whether to judge whether we are righteous or, or wicked. Okay, the negative and positive examples. Now, it's true that even many Christians gossip. What does gossiping mean? Gossiping means that we talk about something with somebody, talk about the negative things of somebody, but without the desire to help the person. We just want to talk about it for fun or spread the bad news about somebody. We don't have to spread the bad news of somebody. We don't have to tell people how bad the person is. We, we want to build up people. We don't want to tear down people. But some people just, they don't care about other people's reputation. They, they tear down people or they just talk uh, about other people for fun. So it's, it's a fact that even some Christians gossip. Now even for uh, 
leaders in the church, when we talk about people, now we need to talk about people who have problems, but we want to have an attitude of wanting to bless the person. We want to help the person. We don't want to just gossip about the person and talk about the person, how terrible he is, or how he has brought different kinds of, kinds of problems. But we say, this person is in a miserable condition. How can we help the person? So instead of gossiping about the person, now sometimes even church workers, they will gossip about members just to talk for fun instead of trying to help the person. So that is gossiping. So negative examples and positive examples that, uh, for instance, I myself know a missionary called uh, Carol Halter. She is very, very careful in her words that she doesn't want to talk about people's things. And she's very careful not to gossip. Uh, so I, I've known people like that and I've known even ministers who gossip. I know two kinds of ministers. So there are negative and uh, good examples. Now there is one negative example like this. In a youth group I, I was in charge of many years ago and there was a, a young woman who brought a young man to the fellowship and they were just friends. But people talk about them as if they were dating. And they were not dating. And then these words would come back to him. And he got very frustrated. He said, how come people are talking about something that I don't even know, that I did not do, but people talk about it. And, and then later that, uh, that young man left the church. He said, these people are always gossiping about me. I don't like to be in this group. So this can cause people to stumble. Gossiping can cause people to stumble. That's a bad example. Okay, So I, I want you to be able to write points that are helpful to people, practical, not just theoretical. Okay, And then God's nature. God's nature is He, he doesn't gossip. He doesn't tell someone about someone else's problem. He, uh, when he tells someone, for instance, a prophet about someone's problem, he wants the prophet to help the person. And God always has the heart to help people. So God doesn't like gossiping. And he would, and all the words from God's mouth, they are righteous and they are words of blessing. Their words will always help people, always bless people. And so the words of God is always pure. So notice every point has to relate to the theme, if the theme is about not to gossip. And then God's grace. When we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into us. And the Holy Spirit will remind us what we talk about, what we talk about other people, what we say about other people. And then the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin of gossiping and the sins of talking down on people, hurting people's feelings, saying negative words to people. So the Holy Spirit will convict us. And then if a person will respond to the Holy Spirit, if they have a good relationship with God, then they will respond to the Holy Spirit. And then they would have a stronger motivation to overcome their gossiping. And they want to talk in a way to build up people, not to cut down people. So that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will continue to work in the heart of people. So this is motivation by grace. We don't just tell people not to gossip. So we want to talk about how God changes our lives so that we don't want to gossip. And we don't want to say things that hurt people. We don't want to say things that despise us, that despise people, that make people feel inferior. We don't want to say things like that. We want to that Holy Spirit will motivate us to say things that bless people, to motivate people. Okay, and then uh, the grace of transference, that, that, uh, the, the transferable grace, that God will give us the wisdom to teach other people how to not to gossip. That as Christians, we want to help other people not to gossip. If people are gossiping, we'll say, let us pray for this person. Let us find ways to help this person instead of talking about his problems. And then reward. 
and blessings. When a person is pure in his words, it's, his words are full of love, then God is very happy and God will bless his life and he will have better relationship with people because people will like him. People will like to relate to him. So he'll get reward in his relationship with people. Okay, but why do people still gossip? Because it's a human nature to, criti to criticize people, to think of the bad things of people. They think that when they talk about the bad things of people, they step on a person and then they can, themselves can go higher by stepping on people. That they think that then they can lift themselves up higher than other people. So also people, you know, they are bored. They want to talk about something exciting. If they find some secret, find out some secret about a person and they talk about it to another person, they, f they find it interesting. This is interesting talk. This is the, the fun time of the day. Now it could be fun, but God doesn't like it. And God would not bless the person. So these are reasons why people gossip and it's destructive. It would destroy the person's life.